Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to Reboot GameSpot's opinion editorial show. I'm Mike Mahardy. And I'm Jake Decker. And last week, we put up a video that more people seem to get mad about than our previous episodes. Uh, it was called Video Games Don't Need to Be Fun. Uh, a lot of the comments were either about, it was just like we predicted people saying, yeah, they do. Or uh, maybe, I think there's a fair deal of people that might not have watched all the way through and were kind of wondering how we defined fun when it was one of the first things we did. Yeah, it definitely seemed like a lot of people saw the title, went in there, and posted in the comments. Some people did watch the whole thing, and some people did say that it was poorly titled, which I don't entirely agree with, but to an extent, yeah, I think maybe we could have uh, focused it a little bit more, maybe. Yeah, no, I mean, there were a lot of people that liked it, but then said, as a suggestion, maybe pay more attention to the titling and... Uh, Try not to be too misleading, which wasn't our intent, but if that was what came off to enough people, then we'll take that into consideration in the future, and we appreciate the feedback. Uh, maybe we could have called it, like, video games can be more than fun or something. Um, because, yeah, a lot of people brought up, like, what we define as fun, but we can get right into the questions. But, uh, yeah, we appreciate everyone's feedback, and we'll keep that in mind going into next week's episode of Reboot. Do you want to read the first one? Sure. Uh, Jed Barber on YouTube, who I believe submitted a good question not, uh, last week, maybe, if not the week before that. Uh, do you think we have limited ourselves by using the term game? It seems like the term game implies fun, but I don't think the medium should only make fun experiences. It seems like the adherence to the idea that these are all games is holding developers back from making these truly deep experiences. Um, I think the traditional definition of video game can, can be limited, but this, this episode is why we need to rethink that, I think. Um, I don't think games always have to be fun. Um, I think a lot of times they can just actually be... a a good way to look at something differently they can be a respite from everyday routine they can be you know a way to catch up with people with friends that share the same hobby which i mentioned in the video but you know we all play games for different reasons but um yeah i mean i i don't i'm not one of those people who thinks we need to stop calling them video games uh i think that's a fine name uh but i think we do need to kind of let the definition of video game kind of keep expanding which i touched on yeah i i mean i i agree with what you said i think that when I think of game, I do think of fun right away. Like, I'm going to play a game. I'm going to have some fun. And I think that there's a lot more to video games than just having fun, which is basically what you just said. Well, uh, the next, I'll read the next one on YouTube just because it's pretty uh, ties into this. Andy D on YouTube says, if I'm not having fun on a video game, I stop playing it, period. Video games should be fun or at least mildly interesting, hence the word game. So it sounds like he had a similar definition of uh, the word game. Uh, but again, I think video games kind of... Uh, a dated term that just that's what we call the medium now and it's never going to change and i don't want it to change because i like the name video game but uh yeah i think i a lot of the games i played this year were more uh for a horror experience or something scary or something negative that touched me in a certain way uh and i i'll keep playing games even if they're not always fun if they do what they're trying to do successfully and what they're trying to convey to me then i'll keep playing them yeah something that uh we didn't touch on on the video that this kind of makes me think of is a lot of times people don't necessarily play games because they're fun. Sometimes people play because they're competitive. Sometimes people play them because, I mean, like a good example is achievements and trophies. Yeah. Right. Like people play those games just for the satisfaction of unlocking those trophies. Sure. Maybe that's fun to some people, but I feel like a lot of people do it because they want to collect. Or like major league gaming. I feel like a lot of the really good pro gamers probably don't see like Call of Duty or Dota 2 or games like that as fun anymore. I mean, I'm sure they yeah. still at deep down really love the games, just like any like pro athlete, but I still yeah. think at a certain part, at a certain time it's a job and watching pro sports is fun, but I think people who watch like MLG stuff or just get really into the nitty-gritty and the statistics and the, you know, the spirit of the thing, just like people who watch basketball or football or baseball. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah. You want to read the next one? Sure. Uh, Phase LCP says this video is really good and I agree with the, the idea I would like to try some of the games that you have talked about but you didn't put any kind of list I think it would be useful tool for the viewers don't you think this one uh, kind of I, it, not so much of a question directly related to the episode but I thought it might be good to talk about some games that aren't necessarily fun in the normal sense well also we if recommend. if that would help people if they want to know what games we do touch on we could maybe in the deck of the video put that's a list, another like, thing i was thinking yeah. too um so thank you for the feedback on that in terms of format feedback on our videos and how we present them that's always helpful just like the titling this week and also yeah if we if it's not directly related to a game which our zelda one obviously was um uh, 
Resident Evil 7 obviously was, but if it's not, if it's more of like a montage of different games like this episode, if it helps people, we'll definitely start putting in like Horizon, Night in the Woods, Outlast 2. Yeah, maybe the games we reference too. Yeah, um, but you were saying you wanted to talk about... Yeah, I mean, I don't know if there's a couple games off the top of your head that you think that aren't necessarily fun, um, but you really like. Uh, to go back a little bit to last year, you had just mentioned Abzu. Did you finish that? I did finish Abzu, and Abzu I loved, but it's a game that I have not wanted to go back to. I've had no desire to go back to. Yeah. Um, and I loved my experience with it. I thought it was great, but it wasn't fun in the sense where I was trying to get through the story, or I wasn't like the mechanics. Uh, the mechanics were pretty good. Ah, this is tricky. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, Abzu I really liked. I did not have fun with it, but I had all the lights off my room. Uh, it was kind of late at night, and it's about three it's meditative. hours. Meditative. Meditative, yeah, that's yeah. what I was going to say. It's very calming. It was therapeutic for me. It's For those who don't haven't played it or haven't checked it out yet, uh, you're a scuba diver, kind of. But there's also some more stuff that reveals itself through, in the ocean as you go through. And if you want, you can literally sit on these stones and meditate and zero in on different wildlife and follow them around, uh, fish or sharks or jellyfish or coral or something. I didn't do that as much, but I really liked the game. The controls were great for underwater. You know, games have this, have a knack for making really bad controls underwater. Uh, and now I think, aside from Prey, Zero G is the new underwater for games with bad controls. But uh, that's a tangent. I, I really like Abzu in the sense that, you know, I played it. It calmed me down for about three hours, even when it kind of gets a little, the conflict gets introduced into the game. I thought it did a really good job of walking you through it at a, kind of at a snail's pace, but in a good way. Yeah, actually another one too that I just thought of. I actually thought the gameplay mechanics, everything were a lot of fun in this game, but I know a lot of people felt that The Last of Us wasn't that much. I mean, I, it, it's tricky, right? More people th people thought it was too overbearing. Yeah. No, um, I, but people love that, that experience anyway, even though it wasn't necessarily fun. Yeah. I mean, the way they introduce certain characters who will later die horrible deaths, uh, the way that just the world itself is oppressive from... I mean, the opening scene is awful. Uh, yeah. I won't spoil it. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people have played I'm it by this point. I'm going to cut the B-roll up. <laughs> You're going to? No, just I'm right not going to. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to spoil it, but the main character, he dies right away. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> you look like you stole that shirt from Topher Grace. Oh, there it was. Um, there it is. But uh, that game is really depressing. And that's that game's different than the other ones I mentioned, because I do want to play The Last of Us again. I played it twice on PS4 since it came out on, as the remastered edition. Uh, I can't wait for Last of Us 2, but yeah, that game kind of reminds me of like Alien, one of my favorite movies. I watch it all the time, but not because I'm having fun doing it. Uh, it's just oppressive. It's bleak. There's a lot of daunting things you get into and pretty sinister people you meet, but that game on a mechanical foundational level, I think is fun to play. Yeah, like I think it's very well designed Yeah, in terms of that sense, but I can understand why people wouldn't think it was fun, but still feel compelled to finish that yeah. game. And last game, we could mention that I'm sure a lot of people thought it was Journey. Uh, I don't think that game's fun, but I think it's pretty fucking powerful in a lot of ways. Yeah, I, mean, I think it almost like what you described with Abzu, very yeah. similar sense. Uh, this is Nako, and he says, this is on YouTube, by the way, Nako, he says, great video. Title can be misleading, though. We kind of touched on this at the beginning a little bit, but yeah, yeah we, we thought the title was good. We thought people would be interested in it. We knew some people would take issue with it, right? But... We didn't think people would take that much issue with yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's worth uh, us considering moving forward because we don't want to misrepresent anything. People are saying it was clickbait. It's not at all what we were trying to do. We were trying to uh, spark curiosity and maybe like some conflict. So when you get into it, you could see how we get to that point, which is the creative choice on our part. But uh, if enough people said it and enough people watched it and liked the video but thought the title was misleading, then we'll definitely take that into account in the future and we appreciate it. We're going to call the next one, What's Better, Xbox One or PS4? <laughs> and then just talk about <laughs> the Switch. Uh, here we go. Saturated butter on GameSpot. This is an on-site comment. Uh, this person said, LOL, this is exactly what I was telling people in the comments for Episode 5 about war. The most important thing in a game should be engagement. Games should make you feel engaged. And you can still enjoy a game that doesn't feel fun. It doesn't need to make you feel happy or excited. Some people will never, never understand this, though, and will forever insist that this medium is a toy that needs to entertain you. Uh... A bit harshly put, but kind of what we were saying. Uh, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't think people will forever insist. They probably, they might. But uh, yeah, I think it's. You know, some people have brought up games don't need to be fun, but they need to be entertainment, and I still kind of disagree with that. Um, yeah, I think this puts it pretty well in terms of uh, engagement is important, right? Like, there are some games they're not coming to mind right there right now that are meant to be 
not engaging in the sense that like the controls are bad in a certain way, but Octodad. I yeah, even that's... gang even gang beasts to a certain extent, but those games are both fun in the way that they use those broken mechanics to yeah. actually, you know, facilitate what's going on. But yeah, I, I a lot of people are saying it needs to be entertainment and I guess the bottom line for this episode and feel free to disagree with me is everybody looks at games differently. Some people there are people that don't even want to call them games. Some people need engagement, some people need entertainment. If you are one of the people that wants to have fun with games, go for it. That's much of the time that's how I am. But lately, I've been looking for more from games because games can do more and games can tell cooler stories and provide experiences that no other medium can. And I love movies and I love reading all the time, but games provide something unique and that's how the way I look at them, I guess. Cool. So that's all the questions we picked out for this week. Uh, Jake went through and sifted through them to find those. I'm sure you saw a lot of criticisms in the process. Yeah, that, this was the hardest one to find questions <laughs> for. But we always invite that. Uh, absolutely. We included some of these on this episode. Uh, but we always appreciate it, whether on YouTube or Twitter or uh, GameSpot itself. Uh, but it's about that time where we talk about next week's episode. Jake, this is actually your idea, so I'll let you hit the audience with this one. Yeah, so we've been playing Prey, yeah. which is very divisive, to say the least. Not I'm, between us. Yeah, not between us. We actually both like it. I love the game. I definitely have problems with it. Yeah. Um, but one thing I do really like is side quests and how they are entangled into the story and then how they branch off and how they entangle back into the story and how they branch off. I think that is really cool. And next week's episode is going to be what makes good side quests. Yeah, and this is one of those that sounds simple at first. But the more research I was doing, I mean, you don't have to do much research. I mean, you can look back at recent games like Witcher 3 did really great side quests. Uh, yeah, Prey, you can look back at Breath of the Wild. They didn't really structure their side quests, but you keep coming across them. But then I look back at like the earliest examples of side quests and I get taken into like MMO side quests and then when fetch quests started and when fetch quests kind of died off recently. So this one, as the other episodes, will be pretty deeply researched but uh yeah it's kind of like gonna look at like jake said what makes a good side quest tied into prey and knowing jake will tie it into the witcher yeah um <laughs> and we will uh, have that up next week and as always in the meantime keep hitting us up on twitter if you watch the video uh leave some comments on youtube on GameSpot. if you haven't watched previous episodes go back and catch up we love uh if you can't tell by these episodes we love having an audience talking to us and we really appreciate your input you're our favorite part of the show and uh we're looking forward to the next episode see you then see you guys